So, um, this is the first time that I'm presenting on the African Open Science Platform. It's a new area for us, although I've, my personally I've been working in open access for more than 14 years already, mostly in open access repositories, open access journals, um, quality issues, um, training and implementing um, these initiatives in South Africa, but also on the African continent. The um, presentation will look at the African Open Science Platform, or OAS, AASP. Um, we will look at the accord on open data in a big data world, uh, focus areas of AASP, rationale for AASP and the benefits, and then I'll have some closing remarks. The African Open Science Platform um, um, started when CoData submitted a proposal to the Department of Science and Technology. The Department of Science and Technology made available funding through the National Research Foundation um, for this project. And um, it will be directed by CoData um, from ICSU and managed by the Academy of Science of South Africa, or ASAF. We often get the question, why ASAF? Why the Academy of Science of South Africa? Because of the involvement of CoData, um, who is part of ICSU, the International Council of Science Universities, and the ICSU office being hosted by ASAF, we became the logical choice for to manage this project. And I've also provided a link where you can read more about ICSU in Africa, the regional office in Africa. So ICSU, for those of you who are new to this, stands for International Council for Science, and it consists of 17 interdisciplinary bodies, amongst others CoData, which stands for Committee on Data for Science and Technology. Their mission is to strengthen international science for the benefit of society by promoting improved scientific and technical data management and use. And I think it's aligned with what you have in mind and many others working in open science and open data on the continent. Just a bit about ASAF, the Academy of Science. Um, ASAF tries to recognize, it's a membership organization, and it tries to recognize scholarly achievement and excellence through its members. It mobilizes its members in the service of society. You will remember, um, just recently, we had a, a huge discourse about fracking and in the Karoo and whether it should continue. What would the impact be on the environment? On the other hand, it would bring lots of business opportunities to the, um, um, which were much needed and are still much needed. But in the end, the DST tasked us up with um, conducting research on this and come up with recommendations. So we identified expert um, members in the field and they came up with a report which in the end influenced um, the decision taken by the DST um, and which was that South Africa is not ready to continue with this process yet. Um, we also conduct um, systematic evidence by studies on issue of national importance, the fracking one an example. And we promote the development of an indigenous system of South African research. And as I said, we've, we are also um, advocates of open access and opening sciences for the benefit of society. So we publish science-focused journals. Um, we are the only ones on the African continent that have implemented Cialo South African, a, a product from Brazil. And we currently have 65 journals published on that platform. We also conduct training on using open journal systems to manage the scholarly journals within your country. It's open source that we use because we also implement it on our side because we feel we cannot advise if we don't know what we talk about. And there's a huge need on the African continent. Many of the scholarly publications only available in print. So while it is only available in print, what are the chances that we can talk about open data if the, the final research output is not even um, available yet? Um, we've also um, scrutinized and compared various um, criteria from various indexes for high quality open access journals and what they should adhere to. We advise journals and we also advise um, um, through NASAC and uh, through the Association of African Universities, fellow colleagues, and we learn from them. And uh, we are also an ambassador for the Directory of Open Access Journals, um, which contains the trusted open access journals um, available out there. 
we also developed reductive partnerships with um, others um, to build capacity within the national system of innovation and we create diversified sources of funding for sustainable functioning, functioning and growth of a national academy. And we communicate and work with um, relevant stakeholders. In, in this project, we will definitely um, like to work with Saigaya. And um, But another very important partner for us is the Association of African Universities. And recently, we deployed um, um, Harvester for them with the help of um, Derisa, which is the host for the software for DSpace Open Source Software Harvester. And, um, We've also developed an evaluation instrument for them. Um, so in future, they will evaluate repositories based on the criteria compiled. And we refer to the ISO I6363 standard, the data seal of approval, and many other certification, um, um, certification systems to develop and come up with an African evaluation instrument to evaluate our own repositories and include them for harvesting in data to our. So how will um, AOSP be governed? We have an advisory council of which the chair is Professor Koto Mokele. Um, they will have a terms of reference which we are working on. We will have a technical advisory board and we would like to identify representatives from various regions in Africa and other stakeholders. And we're also in the process of establishing that. And then the platform office will be ASAF and Exico Data will be the second office. It will consist of a co-data executive director, Dr. Simon Hudson. We will have two um, senior project officers, of which I will be one, and my director, Susan Felsman, the other. And then we just had an interview with some, and in some interviews this morning for a junior project officer to assist with doing desktop research on this project. So the key stakeholders are vast, and you can see a list of them there. Everybody that's interested in research. And as indicated, I, I fully identify with this um, federated platform of yours. And I think um, following the bottom up approach, I'm used to it. And that's actually how most of the things we work on start. And only later, up to a certain stage, you can work without policy. But then to move forward, you need policy. And that's where I ask will come in. Um, so the Accord and Open Data in a Big Data World was compiled by, the, by Science International and it contains a set of values of open data in, emerging scientific, in the emerging scientific culture of big data. It has identified all these values and it also has identified the need for an international framework on how open science is to happen, open data, just a broad framework. Um, it proposes a comprehensive set of principles which we need to adhere to and it provides a framework and plan for African data, sa science capacity mobil uh, African data science capacity mobilization initiative. So of which the result will, the deliverable will be an African open science platform building on the work that you guys have been doing. Um, and we've seen um, many, um, we have heard about many, many times about what open science is about, but just to the foster definition, it's a practice of science in such a way that others can collaborate and contribute. We research data, lab notes, and other research processes are freely available and the terms that enable reuse, redistribution, and reproduction, which we've heard this morning, of research and its underlying data and methodology. Um, and in open um, journals and open repositories, we've gone even further. People don't even need to log in or create an account or register to be able to access. So, so we try to remove as many barriers as possible um, towards accessing the information. Just another definition. And I also like this. Um, Faster life cycle, um, as Roberto mentioned yesterday, it should also be possible to reverse this life cycle. So um, at any stage, um, um, we would like everything to be open. Um, if we look at uh, uh, research data management processes, um, curating and publishing our data, how do we describe the data, the metadata that's assigned, um, DOIs, all those implementations, org IDs, um, in the end, publish it in gold and green um, um, platforms. 
um, allow for open peer review, also post peer review, long after um, the item has been published, and engage and stimulate scientific dialogue on the topics to um, come to solutions and find solutions for problems we are all facing to make sure the world remains sustainable. This is an excellent example of open science um, that was um, in which South Africa was involved. And um, in the article, they wrote, many people around the world have been following the compelling story of discovery of this fossil um, from the first day of the excavation, the Homo naledi fossil. Um, as our as archivists and scientists worked underground in um, challenging conditions, we kept the world up to date on Twitter, Facebook, and with our rising star um, expedition. Since those first days, the team has worked to build open access into every stage of a project. People can now share, not only in the discovery, but also in the process of understanding these ancient hominins. Because what we are today is built on history, and we should learn from history and not repeat the mistakes from the past. So um, this is an excellent example. Um, which also led to citizen science, science and um, the possibility for learners to learn from this discovery. Um, what happened, this research team made available blueprints of the skull on the internet so that schools all over the world um, were able to print this skull in 3D. And can you imagine the excitement of those children having a Homo naledi's skull in their hands and um, experiencing it almost firsthand um, in thousands and millions of hundreds of thousands of kilometers apart. Um, we've heard about so many great examples of how open science contributes and um, also in terms of climate and change, etc. So the Weber Service in South Africa also making its data openly available. What would the value of this African Open Science platform um, be? Um, I think what we would like to try and do is to, to link the dots, to connect all the initiatives from a top level and provide a collective view of open science activities on the continent, regardless of who is funding it or who is initiating it or whatever. We would like to create awareness. Um, I've seen during the many presentations which I've attended that often the people on the ground is doing the work and then management doesn't even know what's going on. I've worked in universities where the one department does not even know what the other department does. Universities don't even know which journals are being published by themselves. So they need to get their houses in order, but we will try to do it from a uh, top level. So we would also like to showcase African research more. Like I've said, so much is going on, but people don't know what Africans are doing. So we need to learn to market ourselves better. We would like to contribute to the global knowledge base, not only be downloaders of information of open source software, but also uploaders and give back. Um, we would like to um, see that the inc um, return on investment is increased through the funders' money. Um, we would like to identify lack of data only once we have a comprehensive view of what's being done and where it has been duplicated. We can identify gaps, opportunities. Um, we would also, through this project, like to identify um, um, needs um, in terms of skills development, um, infrastructure, Policy formulation, policy will be a very important part of this project, as I've indicated. And um, not management at um, institutions are not even aware of what open science is about, how, what to say about, um, um, not even to talk about policies. So um, we would like to create an awareness through this project, and we will need all of you to do that. Um, we would like to act through this project as a conduit for links with international open data and open science programs and standards, never isolating ourselves, developing something for Africa, but never isolating ourselves. Um, we would like to encourage and stimulate the cross use of data across disciplines and, and studies. Um, we would like to see that we, as Africans, um, how do we manage our intellectual property? and 
How can we do a better job of it? Because often researchers come to Africa, they do the research and they take it off the continent. We've heard about articles being published in Web of Science and, and international journals that while we should work on upping the quality of our own journals and um, getting the message out. Um, we would like through the metadata, through um, enhancing interoperability using OIP match compliance systems um, to make our data and research output more discoverable and visible, um, encourage collaboration between scientific and the private sectors, the citizens um, can also be um, in the panel is that I said we should start equipping our learners from a very young age with research skills, embed the principles of ethical research in their genes so that they can pass it on to next generations. Um, so through this platform we can identify duplication in data, um, verify it against one another, one set against another set maybe, and also in the end attract funders because once we know where the gaps are, um, we will be able to see where more research needs to be done. Um, so the five focus areas on which the AOSP will focus um, includes the following, to promote development and adoption of data policies, principles, practices and international standards, um, determine the infrastructure available, the needs, um, address issues of incentives. Lots of money goes into research and researchers often feel why should they share their research openly and we would like to find out why why is it that people share research and data um, and science so and to come up with possible solutions the more people um, the more people the more diverse perspectives we have the more we can come up with possible solutions um, we would like to foster training and capacity building activities um, and, and build on existing programs we don't want to develop um, things from scratch uh, we really want to um, spread the message of the work that's being done already so that more can can be exposed to that and we want to create an awareness and stimulate dialogue I like this quote from um, Edward um, Deming, which says, without data, you're just another person with an opinion. So I can have an opinion, but as long as I cannot prove it or I don't have anything to support it, it means nothing. Nobody's going to really believe me and they're not going to take me serious. So for people to take you seriously, um, you should start making your data available. And another challenge that we face, especially from the early days, most scientific research data from the 1990s, 90s is lost forever. Nobody knows what happened to it, um, where it can be found. It's, it was not curated, metadata was not assigned, it, it's not possible to discover and we should not let this practice continue. And then I, um, this is also a typical example um, why we should have open science and open data. And when an, when an epidemic like Ebola breaks out, what happened in 2015, April, um, speed is of the essence. You don't have time to waste. You need the access to data and immediately. And especially if it's spread to a different continent where the Africans are experts in data. This is um, a niche field for Africans. But um, once it spreads to other parts of the world, it really, it's very important that the research becomes openly accessible and in this incidence there were gaps in the data if you look at the chart on the um, right hand side the blue one and also other problems that the researchers experienced was that they were not sure whether they are allowed to use the data that's been available because they were not sure whether the consent of patients were given um, to, for this data to be shared openly and then we've heard about fake news quite a bit recently fake we have fake research we have research articles being withdrawn on a daily basis and retraction watch is an important source for us um, and we will also have fake data so we must put in and we must make sure that the data that goes out there can be trusted and has been subjected to quality review processes of some kind and that's some answers I still need how do we make sure that the data can be trusted um, do you recommend that it should be peer-reviewed is it possible at all um, what kind of data do you put out there the raw data or the processed data so what what would be the best um, approach um, and just this week I had 
an experience myself where I posted um, from an international mailing list uh, a blog entry on um, comparing APCs from 2010 and 2016. Unfortunately, the data was open. So one of our journal editors went and checked the data and he found a mistake um, because it applied to his journals, of course, so it was close to his heart. And he immediately reported it to the blog author. So I must admit this blog was not peer reviewed, but nowhere we indicated what, we, what it was. But the, the uh, the blog post was from Heather Morrison, who is a doctor, a seasoned researcher at the University of Ottawa. And um, then one of our editors reported to her and she withdrew it. So she um, put up a temporary retraction notice to, to inform the people that she still needs to do some work on it. And um, yeah, then she will publish it again. And I think through data being open, more people being able to scrutinize it, um, the improving the transparency of data. Um, we can identify flaws. Um, in this case, it, I think it was extreme. Um, what the authors did was that they um, destroyed um, statistics and data that showed that vaccines developed um, caused autism in children. And um, I think it was 10 years, the paper was published 10 years ago, and it was published in the journal Pediatrics, which is well used by in health medicine. Um, and then um, just um, I don't know, a couple of years went by before they admitted this, um, that this is happening. And this impacts on our lives as ordinary citizens of the world. So we have a right to know that the data can be trusted the data informing the research output. Um, I've mentioned that we need to understand intellectual property issues better, copyright, um, licensing, um, these, the open data commons licenses, three licenses, and then there's a creative commons licenses, the so six licenses from which we can choose. And um, we also need to, to better understand how to protect privacy, um, how to anonymize data, um, for personal data not to be leaked, and those are real incidents from very recently. And then we've heard about inter, um, infrastructure challenges. Africa, the uptake of mobile, mobile phones in Africa has been huge. And, um, but we've seen the, the map that, that um, Bruce shared yesterday, how we're not connected well enough yet. And um, the infrastructure fails as at times. Just this morning, we could not access our emails, for example, something on the backbone of the sun rain. I'm not sure exactly what is very technical, but yes, <laughs> that was a problem. I could not read my emails, <laughs> so I had to rely on Google. Um, and then um, I've mentioned incentives for data sharing, very important for us. How can we encourage people to start sharing their data and capacity building? In, in some of the articles I've seen that um, Robert Hall's uh, Ulf's article, Top 10 Technology Jobs in 2017, Data Scientists, Big Data, Expertise and High Demand. Um, are we um, stimulating enough re, um, people to, or uh, encouraging people enough to study um, data science? What, what is being done at university level in terms of data scientists as a career? And what are the skills? And lots of work has been done already, but we need to go out and see what it looks like in Africa. Stimulate dialogue. I know a proposal has gone out to, um, to the organizers of International Data Week, and just maybe Africa can host this very prestigious event, creating opportunities such as this to stimulate dialogue, to spread the message. And um, lots of webinars, uh, So um, and also through the online courses, the open education resource courses, um, we can achieve quite a bit. So the status of openness in Africa, just a very broad view. Um, I had a look at um, Webometrics to see how many open access repositories we have currently ranked on it, 74, um, which is great. In terms of open data repositories on RAY3 data, 19. Open educational resources on the OER map, 30 on the African continent. Um, then there's also MOOC initiatives, um, open access journals. As I said, 
we have many printed journals, but as long as it's only available in print, it's not, it cannot be open access. Open monographs or books, open conference proceedings, open patents. Elon Musk has opened up his patents for the Tesla motor car so, because they felt they cannot innovate anymore and they need new young brains with new ideas, new perspectives to come up to, to, to progress their innovations. So open source software and open standards, including the data instruments used to generate the data and then policies, not only open access policies, but open science policies, um, which includes open access. And in December, we had a high level um, workshop in collaboration with the Department of Science and Technology and um, the RISA, and um, where we invited the vice directors of research to, um, to brainstorm. Um, and we had Cameron Nalen as a um, facilitator, and we came up with a recommended statement on open science for South Africa, which will now be included in the white paper, and in the end, hopefully, will become policy. Botswana is doing great work in terms of, of an open science policy. Kenya is well advanced, um, much more than we are in terms of open science policy. So, and also, how do we educate our researchers to properly manage their data? What's the role of a library? Everybody has a role to play. The research office, um, the faculty of departments themselves, the libraries. Um, so, they need to discover their role in this and to remain relevant. Um, in a survey that we've conducted on the status of openness in Africa, very disappointing. We only had 35 responses. We understand that the survey is not the ultimate way to go, and we will follow up with roadshows and latching on to other events in your countries to continue to collect data on various initiatives. So. Um, um, from this preliminary survey, the um, response we had was that 69% indicated that their focus was, was on training um, people on how to conduct open science, how to collect open data. 60% on stewardship of data and 54% focused on policy. And re with regards to funding, 51% um, indicated that the host institution was the main funder and then the international grants was 34% and 20% had national grants. So what are the ASP um, actions and deliverables for this year? This is a three-year project um, and we, it was launched during the South African Science Forum or Science Forum South Africa side event and we also had a panel discussion. During this event we invited stakeholders from all, Afri all over Africa um, and we launched this um, platform you are most welcome to visit the website, which is also kindly hosted by the RISA. Um, and we manage it and populate it with content. That's the agreement. <laughs> um, the, um, the advisory council and the technical advisory board are in the process of being established. So we are in the process of identifying people. They will soon receive the invitations and the terms of reference, and then they will be announced. And next on our table is to expand our network contacts, information on initiatives, um, to identify people from regions or countries on national level who can assist with contributing information. Through, create, through attending events, we would like to create an awareness um, and um, we will also engage in a lot of desktop research and see what Sargaya has done, done this for and to engage with Afri other African stakeholders. So the closing remarks, the issue of collaboration cannot be emphasized enough and it was repeated many times during yesterday and today. Collaborate and learn. I've learned so much during the two days already. And um, a remark from Professor Joseph Wafula is that data is the new gold. If you see how Google is using data, how how data is used to inform business practices. It's not only to find solutions to problems like Ebola or malaria, it's also to predict trends and to strategize accordingly. Um, very much the academy's emphasis is very much on trusted information, trusted data, managing data in a trusted way. And in the words of Minister Naledi Pandor, 
from our Department of Science and Technology, through our OSP, we would like to exploit data for the benefit of society. And we need to tell the African story in an African way. Um, thank you very much, colleagues. This is just the acknowledgements. And you are most welcome to contact me, also Sun. And also, if you want to become part of our mailing list, you've built up an incredible network. And we would like to continue to, to work with you on that. But you are most welcome to contact me in the interim. Thank you. Thank you.